black tax to me is, is when your family keep phoning up saying, oh, we need $100 for this, we need $200 for this, we need $500 for this. I'm Sylvia and I'm Alan and welcome to our channel. So today we are going to talk about black tax. Yes. Do you, what do you think black tax is, Alan? Well, what it is is, and it doesn't just happen to us, it happens to other, all my other friends, it doesn't matter if they come from India, China, anyway. Oh, so it's not about the black people only? No. Because if you think of black, black tax... People, but that's why they call it, because there's obviously a lot more black people over here than probably the other countries, if you were to get to, to find out what percentage were. Anyway, black tax to me is, is when your family keep phoning up saying, oh, we need $100 for this, we need $200 for this, we need $500 for this, we need $20 we for this. We have a project. Yeah, we have a project or something's <laughs> happened, or they need to, they've had a flood at home, and all this sort of thing. They think that, that Americans, if you that America is, everybody's millionaires. And they've all got so much money, they don't know what to do with it. So we end up giving it to them. But what they don't realise is you have to work extremely hard to get anywhere. Right. And after you've worked that, that amount of time, you're getting old, you've got a plan for your retirement, you can't mm -hmm. afford, you've got a plan for your daughter's um, college. Mm -hmm. you, you haven't got, you can never waste your money, you should never waste your money. These people, they sit there, they, you get, you said, you'll be shocked how much if you added it all up. Once you start adding it all up, you realise how much you're giving away. And these people are just living it large because $100 or 10, even $10 in, in a lot of the African countries is a lot of money. Right. I remember when I first went to uh, London. Oh my God, you remember? Yeah. I used to send money all, all the time. time. And Alan asked me one day, he said, do you have to send the money? It's like, do, do you have to? You see, I felt like I was obligated. Supposed, obligated, yes, that's the word. I was obligated to help my family. I had to, I had no choice. That's how I felt. But you know what? As time went by, we got I, older. I realized that, you know what? Hold on a minute. So all I'm doing is just work, 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 and just giving my money all my money away. I'm not even saving any money. Because, you know, I have to work and... And then Chris like, was going to college then, wasn't he? That's yes. when you started thinking about it. And it's, I was like, what, what, you know, when I retire, what's going to happen when I retire? Who is going to help me? You know, so finally, the bulb came on. And I was like, no, 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 no. And the other thing I remember, I sent one of my relatives money. And um, she told me that she had her hair done. When I asked her and I said, you know, what did you do with the money that I sent you? She said, oh, I had my hair done and my nails done. And I don't even have well, my you, you hair were, done. You didn't have time. You were working all yeah, time. Exactly. That was in England. You were going to college, remember? Yeah. And working. Mm -hmm. It was... I didn't have time to go to um, a salon and have my hair done. And I mean, that's um, luxury. If she had said, you know, I bought some food, I would have understood, but... <clears throat> to say um, she, you know, had her hair done, I was like... Oh, and how it's done? Wow. Yeah. And uh, the, the other main issue that um, most Africans can relate to is when um, you get a call every time to say, I have a project. There's this project I need to start. I need capital. I need capital. I need capital. It's like... It doesn't end, but I finally put an end to that. I put an end, I just stopped. Um, I lost a lot of relatives because of that. So, uh, you know, they stopped texting me, calling me. Anyway, if they call, you know, it's, it's about asking for money anyway. They never call to say, oh, how are you doing? How is your husband and your kids? It's usually... Um, they're calling to ask for for money. They are not um most of them are not trustworthy. 
as well. We were ripped off by my own brother. Mm -hmm. We were building a house yeah. in Zimbabwe in 1999, I think it was. And we bought 500 bags of cement before we left. And the following day, my brother, my own brother, sold half of these bags of cement. So he sold 250 bags of cement at half price. I think we paid $500, Zimbabwean dollars per yeah, bag. bag yeah. And he sold it for $250. So um, a truck actually came and, you know, to um, load all the um, 250 bags. Our neighbor, remember our neighbor? Yeah, obvious, we yeah. had our neighbor's phone number. So we called to just to check to see what was going on. Um, and um, he told us that, you know, you left on Friday. On Saturday, a big truck came, loaded up with, you know, bags of cement. He didn't know how many, he, yeah. you know, he just said a lot of bags of cement. And um, he also sold our um, light fixtures. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. A lot of, um, was we had bought everything since we were leaving. We had bought everything, you know, for the house to be finished. Yeah, that's what um, happened. So, I mean, after stuff like that, you know, it made me change the way I thought about sending money back home. Was I realized that I was being taken advantage of. You know, if your own blood does that to you, you are bu buying stuff to build a house, which could have been... Um, because we wanted him to actually look after the house and That's live right, there. Yeah. That was the whole idea. Uh, that brother of mine is no more. Rest in peace, brother. But, you know, uh, I know it, it happened. It has happened to a lot of people. It has happened that your own relatives, just because you are in America or London or Canada or Australia, they think you are loaded. They don't realize that people work. You have to work. If you don't work and pay your bills, pay your mortgage, you'll be homeless here in diaspora. You can be homeless. I was lucky that uh, you really um, took it okay. You didn't yeah. uh, make it a big deal like, you know, why are you sending money? Off? I mean, you did ask me in a nice way because mm -hmm. you just couldn't understand why I had to. Because it was like I was mm -hmm. obsessed with it. Yeah. But we sat and worked out how much you'd actually sent and we were shocked how much it yeah. was. You know, um, in Africa, things have changed now. But growing up, we didn't know anything about mortgage or credit card or loans or things like that. Uh, when it comes to a house, you just buy land and you build it slowly, you know, like you save, save money, you buy bricks, you save money, you buy cement, you save money, you know. And um, there was nothing like um, saving or investments or anything like that. So whoever was working would look after, you know, relatives, right? And just look after them. You don't have to worry about saving. There was no car notes, no, nothing like that it's totally different but now my understanding is now you know people are actually getting loans and car notes and you know because a lot of us are now in diaspora i don't even remember uh, my parents talking to me about investments or saving i know they used to save money that's how they managed to build because my father had a um, couple of houses that he built so but you know, it's like saving a little bit for, you want 10 bags of cement, you save, save, you go and buy your cement and they just do it as you go. Basically, that's um, that's what they were yeah. used to. So, but uh, it's, it's a big issue. Uh, it's funny how every person that I speak with who is from Africa and India as well, like you say, mm. and other, all these other poor countries, should I say, yeah, they are facing the same problem with lucky for us we figured it out we can safely say we don't have that problem anymore of black tax and i hope that we made you understand what the black tax is if you didn't know what it was 
So stay tuned. We'll be back with another video. Bye. Bye.